everybody. This podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReleased.com. CardsReleased.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to an exciting episode of the CHOCOBROS. I'm your host this week, Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And you're Cody Snodgrass who? Uh, Dakota Snodgrass? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you are Cody Snodgrass, qualified for Worlds as a representative of the North American team. How does that feel? Uh, it feels pretty good. How um, does it feel to do it without playing Wind Water? Uh, that feels great. I, well, <laughs> I guess it is like my second favorite deck. Um, but uh, with all the talk about it being like super oppressive and stuff, it definitely feels much better to win with Ice. Right. So what was it? 10 or 12 of the top 16 were water wind i've heard both numbers i think it was i know of at least eight um i know it's double digits or at least like that's what i heard exclusively yeah. from people maybe they were all wrong i think over i think it was eight i didn't actually go up against it in top 16 until the top four match okay um unfortunately because i was pretty comfortable on the matchup by that point <laughs> um, how many times did you play in swiss so it was seven rounds of swiss yeah, so seven rounds of Swiss. I played against Windwater four times. I won all four of those. Nice, nice. Um, played against Fire Ice twice. Won FF6 on stream. You can watch that. I lose very quickly. <laughs> uh, Chris Neal, another local or uh, another world qualified player. Um, then once to Fire Ice FF8, I won that one. And then one game against Ice Earth. I won that as well, so. Nice. Only dropped one game throughout the whole tournament. Nice. So wait, only one game. Did you 2-0 all of your top cut matches? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah, a, and it was... That's an impressive... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I didn't even, like, think about it until, like, flex. after it was... Yeah, I didn't even think about it until I was after, like, all said and done. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I think Chris... I think Chris congratulated me, like, right after. And I was like, thanks for being my only loss, and being the best tiebreaker all day because he went undefeated during swiss <laughs> <laughs> right so nice man so uh talk a little bit about for everyone listening who does not want to play wind water but thinks it's this oppressive deck which it it kind of is pretty oppressive but how do you fight the matchup and like what are your key cards talk about just talk about in general how you four owed <laughs> that deck oh. yeah so six owed or whatever that ended up being <laughs> after after top cut was all said and done yeah, so I, the key cards, at least in Ice, that help deal with that matchup are obviously your discard outlets. So Sephiroth is huge. Um, his special is a pretty big deal. Um, I heard you kind of savaged Alejandro. Uh, <laughs> I think Alejandro was the first person all day to beat me to five backups, which was kind of like <laughs> disappointing for me because that was like my main goal was just to beat everyone <laughs> to five backups. Uh, uh, but yeah, we have, I'm trying to think of our game. I guess he you dropped Sephiroth and special pretty soon after. I think, just after. I think it might have been immediately after. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, if they were on four cards, I was trying to slam Sephiroth with a special, even if I had to overpay, which usually I overpaid for almost every time. Mm-hmm. Um, which is fine when they're losing everything in hand. Yeah. Um, feels pretty good. And yeah, if they're not on four plus backups by then either, them playing on three backups plus a card, it turns off Fina. Uh, turns off mm-hmm. Yasmet. It turns off a lot of their top decks, like the big, big ones. Like you're sure they can still get, you know, some Diablos plays or something, but then they have nothing else. So uh, you get to right. just play whatever else, and then they have no hand, and that's where you want to be anyway. Because if there's one turn they don't play anything, you can easily discard two, and then like Sidalstein. You only had one Sidalstein though, right? Yeah, yeah, only one Sidalstein. What was like, the uh, decision behind that? If you're such a uh, discard heavy deck. Well, so- so at the airbnb we were i think i was probably the last person to fill out my deck list most of the guys already filled it out the night before uh, i play tested a bunch with chris adams he crushed me with the ff8 fire ice deck almost every <laughs> single game uh so i was kind of losing faith a little bit uh it still ended up going to ice uh always making way too last minute decisions um <laughs> Because I was playing with an unupdated list. I had, like, three Vayne in the list still. Three uh, Vayne? Yeah. Which I almost missed having three Vayne. Um, what What are you using or, Vayne for? Obviously dulling, like, Yasmat, uh, Fina, but, like, then they have no... Or then they just reactivate, right? 
I mean, if I get to a game where I let my opponent play Yasmet Fina, <laughs> you're playing Ice 100% wrong. <laughs> uh, but, like, there there would be times where they would have, like, Veritas and Lena down, and they just couldn't do anything. Like, Vayne is just there, just like, sorry. And then I'm swinging through with, like, Locke and Genesis, so they're never having 9 CP. I guess um, they don't have the Bartses, so they don't have as many activates off of the X-Burst. I mean, Yasmet's still <laughs> a horribly X-Burst for you, but... I mean, you still have snow, so worst case, you can, like, party attack to redull two guys or something, so. Yeah, and having, like, Duke Larg in the matchup is also, like, huge. Because most of the Wind Water cards aren't big. Yeah. So, like, I can swing, dull something with snow, dull their biggest guy with snow. Or usually I would dull their Porum. That way I didn't have to deal with any, like, summon <laughs> recursion. Um, but, yeah, snow is really big in the matchup, uh, if not the biggest card. Uh, Edward with the silent first negate some summons was pretty big didn't do it nearly as much as i'd like to um but most of those matchups were over fairly quickly yeah i noticed um, you had a uh three one split of celeste too was is a three cp <laughs> celeste just to get it back off the scholar for the uh, instant speed uh specials that's one of the main reasons yeah uh, unfortunately i had to cut scholar down to two because mm -hmm. um, i crammed 18 backups basically <laughs> there was stuff i'd like I wanted Edward, so then we laid out 17 backups with Edward, and I was like, oh, well, now I want Harley. So then we cut Jill in the bot entirely, and then I was like, oh, I want Cacetus, or whatever it's called. Cocky boy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, now I want Jill in the bot back. So <laughs> I just eventually settled on 18 backups on the Uber over to Gen Con. Um, and then the Sid Alstein, the one of Sid Alstein was completely Adam Lane's decision. We were just thinking of another forward, and I had a few ice forwards out. And uh, he was like, why don't you just play one Sid Alstein? And I was like, yeah. Oh, so you actually added the Sid Alstein. You didn't cut two. Oh, no, no. There was no Sid Alstein at all. I haven't usually don't play Sid Alstein. <coughs> Sorry. Bless you. you. You're good. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I usually don't play Sid Alstein at all. Why as is that? Late. Is that just so they don't replay things like Fina or whatever to get entry value? I you mean, usually... Usually there's enough dull freezing, and nobody's playing anything to really stop dull freeze effects. Uh, you got, like, reactivation effects with Fina and Yasmet, um, but at that point it's almost fine because we've already gotten through for that turn. Um, nobody's playing, like, Guy or Yang or, like, <laughs> the, the Earth Black Mage that prevents dulling and stuff. Uh, but maybe that'll change, but... <laughs> yeah, right. Now everyone's afraid of ice. <laughs> and they won't play that Windwater anyhow, so not really that big of a deal um but yeah i hadn't been really playing said alstein adam lane said to play one uh i played one in kansas and it was pretty good i think i only used it once or twice mm -hmm. uh at this tournament i only used it in the top four match against adam lane unfortunately and then obviously the two times against kyle mcginty in the finals were pretty huge two times yeah it was uh there was one time where i had him in hand he played yasmet he had one card left in hand after that. I just had to draw discard outlet, drew Sarah, slammed Dalstein afterwards. And that game was pretty much a wrap. And then our oh, final game. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like twice in the same game. I'm like, how did oh, you no. get the Sid Alstein back? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And then the final game, obviously I had to draw it. I drew my hand and just started shaking my head. And he goes, oh, you drew it? I was like, yeah, I drew it. <laughs> it was pretty much a wrap after that card came down. Because Yasmet's like anti-ice pretty much right entirely um we play a, we play very top heavy a lot of five drops six drops seven drops um what's cool though is they can never attack with it unless they have a way to reactivate if you have the emperor out because you'll just snap kill that the, the oh, yeah, yeah. turn like if you have snow and emperor out like you're just gonna dull the rest of their board or dull it actually that's true too if you have snow you can just kill it anyway so mm -hmm. even with like um I I even like playing Azure and discarding my other three cards in hand, I feel fine doing that. As long as it, whatever gets rid of Yasmet is the optimal play every <laughs> single time. Like you could, you could lose the game the next turn as long as you got rid of Yasmet, you, you did okay. Like <laughs> you did all you could. <laughs> so they they actually can't even really save him, can they? Unless it's like Diablos in response to the Emperor activation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something. There's, I mean, there's a few things I could do like that. So, uh, do you, do you make sure to always have that card in the matchup because you need to be able to kill things? You talking about the Sid Alstein or the Emperor? Uh, the or... Emperor, sorry. 
Yeah, I tried to. I'm uh, only playing two copies of it. I think two is enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we went up to three before, and I think two is fine. You usually want to see it very early. I don't mind missing the, on the entry value because the card's just too good to not have on the field. Right, right. Um, but yeah, and then the, the main thing this weekend was the three Azure Dragon. Uh, oh, you were playing and, three of that thing? Yeah, yeah. Me and uh, Okimoto had a... We had a pact, which <laughs> one of one of us stuck to and one of us switched <laughs> to Fire. <laughs> one of us switched to Fire Ice last minute, um, but... Yeah, so that was that was the pack was to play three of that, nice. and the irony nice. that I actually won playing three of it was kind of. So like what the, that card was also <laughs> good. Now that I think about it, that also kills Yasmat. So like that's there's a bunch of answers you have for it. Yeah, and I wanna. I'm pretty sure. I know I said this when I recorded with the RVA guys the other day. Uh, I think in my top eight match, it actually put me out of all Sid Allstein range because I hit that on EX. Because he was going to make me discard my only card in hand and then place it all steam. Mm -hmm. And I ended up netting another card. So I was safe from Sid all steam, at least for a turn. So. Oh, okay. The oh, card was very it, good. When it enters, you what? Look at the top X amount of cards and pick up ice well, when, card? If, if it hits an EX burst, it does. What's the uh, normal text on it? Just when it attacks. Oh, attacks. Okay. Gotcha. And if that, get, if that card ever attacks, I've never lost the game. <laughs> it's just the card's just super good it's it, you have to deal with it immediately like which was fine because it was taking care of like diabolos and like other forms of removal immediately mm -hmm. well, I was fine. I mean, that's the thing is like ice looks so soft to diabolos because all your main haymakers are five plus but you have so many five plus haymakers they have to have more than three copies of diabolos they've got to pour them at every time and they're not milling, necessarily milling you and Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's pretty good. That's usually the thing I get whenever I say I play ice. It's like, oh, well, you just get Diabolos. It's like, oh, uh, <laughs> that's fine. I'll just play an orphan next turn. <laughs> um, but yeah, the deck was very good. Much, I think it was a lot better than I expected it to be. Um, and I think a lot of that had to do with testing and just watching like Kyle McGinty and Okimoto because we all stayed in the same Airbnb. So. Right getting to like test and grind and watch those guys play and um just get like little tips and stuff like that from them right helped out a lot um but yeah a good weekend of cards i mean yeah i'd say <laughs> yeah. maybe not my sealed sealed was pretty bad but uh <laughs> hey you, but got, I, you got the cue and that's what matters well i know I've at least one I've, of your cues yeah one one of the cues the nat one is <laughs> still yeah, I'll get there hopefully one day. Hopefully Cody, next Cody Commentator 2019 at Nationals. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, I do want to give a shout out to the Break Zone. Um, I think those guys did an awesome job this week. Um, and they took a lot of awesome photos, so big shout out to those <laughs> guys. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I really didn't get to hear much of your story about the constructed event. I know you told me what had eliminated you. Yeah, um, so I'll just go which seems like this pretty quick. Uh, yeah, I'll let, you, I'll let you take over. <laughs> so round one, uh, well, first of all, I was playing a 2.5.1 color deck. It was mainly water wind, had some earth, had a couple lightning cards, and it was spicy. It was a summons mill deck. Uh, mm -hmm. The I had been testing for a long time trying to figure out how to beat the win-water matchup. I could beat pretty much any deck except Scions. Spoiler. Uh, <laughs> uh the, and it was it's just been very fantastic um i could not solve the matchup though and but i think it was because i refused to play all three valfour all three diablos at first because i was trying to play the same deck as last opus or just edited um and it took them all out wasn't good enough so put all three in uh, with some advice the previous night uh from both richie and a couple other people i've worked on the deck with uh added more wind cards i put in charlottas to get my colors also took out some of the cute backups try to just make it more consistent um even if it wasn't as like interesting to me uh but if you watch the stream uh i also played three copies of kamari oh the backup the or... backup okay so well, it taps for your opponent's colors right? yeah so my logic for that was i was trying to figure out at first i was playing the earth moogle that makes lightning cp so i was just like all right i've got some lightning summons i need an earth backup that's not a jito to play my shintoto because if i don't have chaos out i need to be able to play my shintoto 
and sometimes I just don't have enough earth cards. Uh, so I need to be able to play an earth backup when I have that opportunity. Um, also, Sherlata helps in that regard as well. Uh, I actually played Kamari once by, you know, dulling, sacking Sherlata just for the 2 CP to play it. Um, but in a meta where I'm expecting over half of my matchups to be Water Wind, he makes all three of my colors. Which, uh, in testing, one of the problems with my Riku backup was I didn't. I had to always keep back either uh, Shantoto or Chaos to mill. And then that only leaves me one multicolor backup in order to use all the different summons in my deck. So having Kamari be wind, most importantly. Uh, water is sometimes relevant, too, if I need to play Yuna or something. Uh, it was actually a very crucial piece, and it kind of like solved the whole thing. I played uh, a couple games with um, Alejandro the previous night, and I think we went 3-1. and one. Uh, in the matchup, so I felt really good after that testing. Uh, <laughs> so I did it. I I did me. <laughs> I didn't want to play just regular Water Wind. Uh, I was I was this close to audibling to it, but um, so anyway, round one uh, was Water Wind. Uh, my opponent played a turn one Yuna, and then no more backups for five turns. Oof. So discarding, I think, the other two units in the process. And yeah, it was just slow. And by the time they built up, I was already built. And I just one for one all turn, every turn, build, 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 just did a normal game plan. Um, stuff. Uh, also, that matchup is where I Valford five times in two turns. Um, <laughs> it seems pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was like Valford, Valford. And then the next turn was like a Jito. Or sorry, bounce my Jito with Shimhazai. Play Ajito again, pitching two backups, get back two Valfors, pass. And then they went to go, uh, you know, mill and then Diablos untap. And in response, I pitched a Chaos Walker, Valfor, 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 milling four times, put them to one card, and just like kind of shrugged. They couldn't mill me out, and I just passed turn, and the game was over. <laughs> um, so that was fun. Uh, round two was Windwater again. Uh, it was Brian Berkeley. Uh, he was on an interesting version with like Barrel Eye and Scholar and some other stuff like that. Uh, that I think game he was. was uh, what's that? Yeah, he might have been almost, if not on the identical list of Kyle in the finals. Okay. Because they were playing Scholar and Barrel Eye at, at the Airbnb. Um, yeah, and they had really low forward count. They were kind of a more de uh, dedicated mill deck, kind of that we've seen from Japan and uh, I think a little bit in Europe as well, uh, where mm -hmm. there's lower down on the forwards and just play the necessities for board wipes and untapping <laughs> but or activating uh but yeah that one i just ground out it got down i think we were like i think i had like three or four like between three and five cards left in my deck when i milled him out so that was just a zero damage mill fest <laughs> none of us did anything but milling uh miss dragon was great in that matchup uh, i'm pretty sure his last turn he was doing math to try to figure out how to like basically end me and I let him untap with pain, which he wasn't expecting. And then he went to go Diablos, and I misdragoned it. And then he had something else, and I was able to, like, I had him covered with, like, Valfour Archer. Like, I had him three different ways dead. Uh, so that <laughs> went in my favor as well. I believe it was the next round I played against... Uh, oh, man. I think the next round, I think, was Scions. So I lost to Scions. Uh, my opponent got two very good mist dragons off on me uh the first one uh countered a shimhazai on my shantoto so i didn't get to shantoto a second time uh to wipe out three forwards and then i took beats i think i ex bursted something to take one less damage but uh it was not a good <laughs> not a good situation um i died so I, and then they also were able to counter a diablos that i played later which is pretty backbreaking as well uh so i just got mist dragoned out of that game uh, science is hard anyway. I I learned by the end of the tournament that I'm very soft to Ishtola because she just can't be broken, and I realized the only removal I really have for her is either uh, like triple Valfor or uh, some kind of like Val uh, Fanfort play. Mm -hmm. So or I guess Diablo's Valfor also works, but that's a lot of investment for one forward when they can just shit out a couple more in the next turn and just haste you out. So if I didn't have Alexander. Uh, that matchup would be even harder, but I have two copies of that, which can kind of handle the Alice sometimes. But no, uh, really hard matchup, lost. Uh, then I got put into Mono Ice uh, and got to listen to my opponent complain the whole time about how boring the match was because I was just killing his guys and milling, but I mean, 
<laughs> sorry. I just <laughs> at least it's not Lynn Lauder. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was playing Unit H, obviously, so with Cass Walker and stuff. Um, was he uh, was he or she playing Snow or like? I don't remember if I saw Snow, but he has never had forwards. I just killed all of them on sight. And Interesting. Never okay. Never got hit. I think I got that took like maybe three damage like in the beginning, but once I board wiped once, uh, it was the old classic move of you know only playing one to two forwards. He he knew I had Shantoto the whole time, so once I drew a Shimhaza, I just jammed Shantoto, and then next turn three forwards, and I went Shimhaza. I pick up my Shantoto, Shantoto again, and then, <laughs> which is pretty pretty brutal. That's pretty back breaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, after that point, it was just one for one the whole time uh, until he got milled out. Then the next round was the tragic round. Uh, three and one at this point, feeling pretty good. I uh, get put against Colin Coughlin on stream, uh, Wind Water versus my mill nonsense, and we're extremely close. His Asura caught me off guard, so he had more untaps than I was expecting. Uh, I got unit down eventually. With um, I guess it looked like a pretty steep play. I unit his Veritas and then like took a point of damage or two, but like. I need to get the unit down, and Veritas just doesn't do anything, and it's 6 CP he has to pay if he wants to replay it. Otherwise, it's just going to be stuck in his hand. So, uh, and I don't care about the Porum at that point, because it's just going to die and get removed. Um, then there's also a turn, people on stream and, and the uh, comments and stuff were confused why I Diablo's Malford a single pain. I'm like, first of all, I got three mils off it, which is how I'm winning. <laughs> so, that was pretty good. And also, I just couldn't take damage. Like, I cannot afford to take one point, and if I can also get three mills off it, like, I'll waste all that stuff. Because at this point, they're going to play one to two forwards a turn, and my whole hand is just removal. So, um, But there was a turn where I Valford to untap, and then I used it uh, to kill a... I think it was a... It was either a Porum or a Zidane. I think it was a Porum. And then I... Uh, Activated my backups, and I'm on five backups. Uh, Yuna, Riku, Shantoto, Chaos, Ajito, I believe at that point. Or it might have been Kamari. Whatever it was. Um, and when I dulled my 3 CP to pay for the Chaos Walker to kill a Zidane, good. We resolved the summon. And then I look down, and normally I keep my backups in a very certain position. Like, I'm just it's just muscle memory. But I moved my Riku. So I accidentally dulled my Riku uh, as a part of the payment for the Cast Walker. And at that point, once I've resolved the summon, I can't really go back and say, whoops, you know, I've already removed it. We've already gone to the next phase. And I look down and I start to, like, move them. I'm like, I, I can't do that. Like, it's just, you're just not allowed to do that at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know some people say, well, it's not that big a deal. It's like, well, kind of, we're, you know, we're playing for worlds. You shouldn't make those kind of mistakes. And I would not let my opponent do it. And because I won't let my opponent change payment after resolving a summon, I'm not going to do it myself either. Uh, mm -hmm. So get to the end of the game, I lose by a single card. Uh, I had no cards in deck, and he had two when I passed turn. So, of course, you could say that one card would have changed the draws, but if anything, would have been, it couldn't have been worse than what he had. He had all of the rest of the summons in the deck, so maybe I would have milled something else. Uh, he got to draw two and pass. So he would not have been able to do that. And I would have won the game. That would have been four and one going into the next round. But I wasn't because <laughs> I missed the one. So that was brutal and it's going to haunt me for a long time. Uh, and then I got put into another science matchup and swiftly knocked out of the tournament. So science, science is just your enemy. <laughs> yeah, it is. So that one, I just got trounced. Like I never found Alexander for the Alice. Uh, his Ishtola, I never had Famfrits for it. I, f I had a Famfrit pretty early, and then I never found another one. So I think one, I think I played the six drop Famfrit pretty early to get rid of some guys, and then damage the second copy of six CP Famfrit I had, and then I never found the single ones. <laughs> so, yeah, I couldn't deal with the Ishtola, and I eventually died. I killed everything else, but <laughs> that only means so much. Uh, and then I, yeah, I just like Shantoto the single one. He had a Haster, and I died. So, yeah, it was unfortunate. But Gen Con is a sick event, as I learned. Uh, walking around, seeing all the boots, and uh, playtesting all these various games. A uh, shout out to the Jasco Games crew and all the Omaha guys that were helping out there. Like that game is really fun, and uh, I enjoyed doing the demo for the My Hero Academia game. 
I think a lot of Final Fantasy players actually enjoyed playing that. Uh, people yeah, there's asking quite... on Facebook for decks and stuff. Yeah, anytime I lost Chris Adams, I was like, oh, he's probably just over playing my hero. Or... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Gen Con was definitely, I think it's probably been my favorite event so far um, that I've ever been to, maybe. Um, really? Yeah, Gen Con last year was also very cool. Uh, last year, I pretty much met everybody that I know now, um, mm -hmm. like Rice and Oki and really got to know like Chris Adams and Adam Lane. Um, right. This time, obviously, staying with them. Now we're like, we've been like good friends for a whole year now. Mm -hmm. um i think it was a lot more fun yeah no, it was um, definitely it felt like just like a majority of the known players were there like yeah it was obviously very whenever stacked. we say this like no offense to people who were you know not including in this group but there's the core group of grinders that everybody knows the rva guys meta potion and all the other california people that um teams that uh, tag along i think sh team shuffle i don't know who's on what team these days <laughs> like there's so many now but uh and then there's like uh you guys project zodiac from uh kansas area and the, like there, there's just so many groups of people that you see at every major crystal cup and all these events so yeah and it seemed like there were not a lot of people missing from that from that core group yeah, the, only, the only people i know that were missing uh for sure just because i talked to them uh was like the canada boys um mm -hmm. which obviously they they pretty much ran gen con last year um <laughs> <laughs> uh and then i know like curtis kang and steven arboleta and John Schreiner, I know they couldn't make it out. Um, mm -hmm. But outside of that, it was, I mean, it was a very stacked tournament. Yeah. All I mean, the friendly faces. If you look faces. at the top cuts for both tournaments, it was just like killer, 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 yeah. killer, killer, killer. Oh, good for this guy. Killer, killer, killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the top eight of um, of the sealed, I was like, well, at least I'm not in that. I don't have to deal with like <laughs> right. <laughs> all these like well-known names, like multiple tops across the board. Um, mm hmm and yeah, shout was, out to was... Kyle Peters as well for uh, getting qualified in the uh, other Worlds Qualification Tournament. We're limited, thank you, limited tournament. Uh, and also shout out to Oki for two-timing Worlds Qualifications, technically for you know winning events. But well, that's is that three time now? Three time Crystal Cup three? champion. Well, three, it might be three time Crystal Cup champion if you count last yeah, season. He... But I'm saying this yeah, season it's two times yeah. Worlds. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. He's just, he's an animal. Um... <laughs> Yeah, we were very excited to be able to take our our trophy picks at back at the Airbnb. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, two two members of uh, Project Zodiac. No, oh, yeah, yeah, that was that was also insane. Like, definitely like the best way it could have ever. I mean, obviously Kyle could have won and got a trophy. Uh, but <laughs> getting two worlds invites is crazy for us. Our mm -hmm. chat was blowing up. Um, I think I finally caught up with like the Facebook messages oh geez <laughs> you just get bombarded um the best i'd done outside of this was like i yeah, think getting third <laughs> yeah getting third at kansas or like getting third at nats it was the so. undefeated lq into the next day knocking me out of nationals and taking like, third in the whole <laughs> tournament <laughs> something like that yeah that's probably like and that was like two messages and it was just like can i see your list um uh, but yes yeah, very surreal uh yeah, overall, I think it was a pretty good weekend. Did you? How did you do in the sealed? Or did you play in the sealed? I didn't sealed? even play in the sealed. Uh, okay. which I'm kind of glad I didn't. Like, I actually thought it was all draft. So I thought it was a massive draft and then whatever cross pool, oh, okay. some BS. But uh, I just, there was so much I wanted to do at the event. I was kind of happy I didn't get a ticket. I had an opportunity. Someone did have an extra ticket. Uh, but I just, after seeing the event on Thursday, so we had all Thursday once we got there. I think we got there around like noon instead of like 10 but uh we walked around for like six hours and i only saw like 60 percent of the event like just just walking past booths too i wasn't even play testing i i had a couple chats with some of the like vendors and stuff but i was hustling and i couldn't get through more than half of it or too much more than half of it so by the time the constructed tournament is over and i saw the rest of the place i was kind of happy to have saturday to like go do stuff like playing events mm -hmm. uh, maybe buy some stuff test some games uh, i picked up a board game that i'm like obsessed with right now uh so that's been fun <laughs> oh, okay but. yeah it, it was definitely not not my cup of tea the limited format uh i picked up my draft pile saw there was no bahama zeros and i was like oh <laughs> I'll, i'm probably dead <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah shout bahama out to somebody zero. got like what was it two porums and three bahama zeros like okay oh jeez 
Or no, it's three form and two bomb and zero. Some some ratio of that is just absurd. I say I know like Adam Lane, he had four porums and a one big fan for it, one bomb at zero. Um like in nine packs, that's insane. Like yeah, even Bahamut in nine zero. packs. Yeah, Bahamut Zero, if you didn't get that card, I'd and you topped, I'd kudos to you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it pretty much crushed me and most of the games I lost. Uh except for my stream game. You can watch me misplay all day long in that stream game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> how did this guy get to worlds what a <laughs> yeah, yeah what an idiot i thought, I thought you could like a bagon, i thought bagon could like block and then like take lethal damage and then dump itself oh no <laughs> tim's like dude you totally can't do that i'm like this is why i don't play earth cards tim okay Two, <laughs> you they, totally they got these, can't do that they got, they got these long effects on earth cards and they're just bad like, <laughs> and, like so uh, but so Andrew Nelson, you haven't in constructed. You haven't yet activated sacrifice bomb and then buy gun their board. No, no, God, no. You don't want eleven k your opponent's board. It seems pretty good. That, no, that that is just sounds awful. Oh, <laughs> it sounds like some weird. That's a local only deck. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, he actually ended up letting me take it back, and I could have made like a huge board wipe play. Um, but after he let me take back the block, I was like, there's no way I can do this on stream. I was like, there's no honor behind that. Like, I would just look like an awful human. Uh, <laughs> so I just I just took the damage, and he ended up crushing me. Uh, and, yeah, that's pretty much the end of my sealed. Like, I, I lost one more time after that very swiftly. Uh, but, yeah. Kyle McGinty, he was my round one opponent, so it was like a finals rematch from the yeah. day before. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, that match was going pretty good for me. He was on like Earth, Fire, Wind, and then Bahamut Zeros from hand. And I'm like, oh, you got lightning cards. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, wow. It's just this is fun. Casual lightning card? <laughs> yeah, just casual best lightning card in the set. Or did he um, have the uh, Earth Moogle? It's one of his Earth cards. I don't think he did. I think he discarded like uh, one of the FF14 cards to play the Bahamut Zero from hand. I was just like, oh. I'm dead. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I think it was still fun. It's just not my, not my style. Uh, right. And then obviously I'm not a big fan of draft. So even if say I do make top eight, then I have to draft against like seven other other world's best players. Like <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> and that's when we were able to like go and see the food trucks and go walk around and stuff like that. So right. Yeah. But yeah. All in all, it's very good time out there at Gen Con. Only the only gripe, of course, is the no nationals invites. Um, yeah, but it turned out okay for me. I can't I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I will definitely be attending next year, even if there's not even a Final Fantasy tournament. I think I'll go to Gen Con every year now. Like it's just a sick event. Um, of course, I'll want to play in at least one like major tournament there. But other than like, if there's two tournaments, I might only play in one, even if I could play in both. Just because, like I said, there's so much to do. And, like, I only did a fraction of what there is to do with Gen Con. Like, there's so many, like, events on the side and seminars and, like, learning about, like, game design is interesting to me and seeing, like, how things get balanced and how just all those processes fascinate me. So I'd like to do more of that if I went again or when no, I went yeah. again. Yeah, definitely. That's the only issue is with most of these, like, events, especially, like, Gen Con. Like, there's never enough time. Like, I like, would I rather O even... three 3 and just get trounced right off the bat so i can go do the event but if i'm like in the seventh round sweating with a winning in or something or like i'm playing for my tiebreakers and i miss it and i get bubbled on tiebreakers or something i would just be so livid i'd be like ah oh, what's the point <laughs> like i should have just <laughs> been enjoying the event no yeah definitely i don't think i was even able to spend any time with like kyle peters and he's like my teammate like <laughs> we saw each other at the tournament and that was it um so just i wish we could have more time you know at, like these big events um but yeah, getting able, being able to meet like Tim. Uh, yeah, I had no idea who's gonna be there. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. I had no idea either. I, w I had like got to the Airbnb and they're like, Tim will be here in like 20 minutes. I'm like, Tim, who's Tim? And then they <laughs> say, they say it's Tim. And I'm like, wait, like the EU guy? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was it was pretty awesome getting to hang out with him and all the boys getting Kageyama, getting to play test against him. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't Always end up good. playing against Kageyama. I just kind of never caught the open play times. I was just wandering around too much and lost track. 
Yeah, I got to play them in one gunslinger um, right before they started wrapping that up because uh, they were flying, I guess, back home. Um, but got to play them one time. Got the win with the mono ice. So there you go. It's always always a good time. Uh, <laughs> well, speaking of the combination of both uh, Kageyama, Mr. Mono Fire, and Tim Schilder, uh, the German, <laughs> uh, there was a grand open in Germany that included a mono fire deck in the top sixteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not surprisingly less wind water than so so here's some statistics for you there were more fire cards than ice cards and there were more fire cards than water cards played at the event at least in the top 16 uh yeah, it's a, almost 50 percent of the cards played were wind there were lots of mono wind decks so one two three four five mono winds two wind waters with like or three wind waters with almost no water cards. Uh, it was actually an earth water. I haven't looked at that one yet. Oh, that's spicy nonsense. Okay. Luna Freya and Final Fantasy 15 people. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, I saw. But two model lightnings, Scion, Scion's Golbez. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where the, all the ice players were. Uh, I'll have to make a few phone calls or something. All right. And the, <laughs> Get some uh, of these guys back out there. And I guess the ice player that made it. Uh, no dig at him, but he actually only even made it with ice cards because there was uh, the banning of our first player in the competitive circuit for marked cards. Uh, I guess I'll maintain not throwing names out there, but mm -hmm. uh, we, we do know who it is. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah marked uh... cards, uh, when they are, what, nine of the experts? There's, what, Porums? Uh, what was it? Porums? Bamfritz and Valfors or something like that. They're like very. I don't know if those are the some, exact ones, but I know Porums were one some, of them. Some number of EX bursts were. Uh, Any number greater than zero <laughs> for marked cards are pretty. It's a pretty garbage thing to do. So uh, glad to see swift action taken on that. Uh, but uh, and congratulations to uh, Michael for making top sixteen as a result. Yeah, <laughs> but you disappointed Cody. With your ice cards. <laughs> nah, he made it. He made it. That's all that matters. That's true. Uh, yeah, there uh, were only no, four think... dark cards in the top code as well. 21 light. Probably all Yuri's. <laughs> yeah, there were. Or several, several Yuri's at least. Yeah, there's one Veritas here. Uh... I think it's interesting. Whoa. Uh, there was one Hraisfelger in uh, oh, yeah, the Wind Water decks. I did see that, yeah. I don't know if they right. just didn't own Veritas or... All right, so but, I actually haven't looked at this modifier deck yet, so let's uh, on-site it. Oh my, it's an Ifrita deck with Ifrits. Mm. There are three... Oh man, so oh, 12 summons. I'm going to have to pull this up. Two of the new Belias. Two of the 2CP Ifrit that deals more damage if you have a bunch of fire characters. To be fair, that's probably one of the best ones. Uh, Ifrita, two copies. Only two, while also trying to get all these payoffs, but okay. Uh, one... 4 CP Bahamut that you can only cast with backups. 3 Ifrits that deals more damage for the fire backups you have. And 2 Phoenixes, 7 CP. That is a crazy summon line. Uh, Seems pretty Lots of pretty the X-Burst backups, which is pretty good. Uh, Vermilion, Bird, Lassie, both of them. The Zuyu and the uh, 6 CP backup. Uh, Nails. Oh, he, play he played Zuyu? Oh, that makes me... <laughs> Right? It's one fire card I actually like. Uh, I love that card. The pain train. Stops for no one. Uh, Lon, Iroa, Guy, Bergen, Furion. It's a pretty sweet list. Um, I think if I was to play Mono Fire for some reason, this I would start here, probably. Uh, the only thing I don't like is I'd play, probably play a third Marsh. Like He's only playing two, and it finds any card in your deck that's not a summon. Or not finds, but you know. Look at top five, mm -hmm. take a card. Yeah, he's playing a lot of different unique four. I mean, unique characters all the way around. Um, pretty interesting. I don't. What place did this get? I didn't even. Uh, I think it was fifteen. I just clicked, yeah, it's fifteen. The all red one. Okay. So they were the sixteenth seed going in uh, to top cut, but mm -hmm. I mean, still, that's pretty insane. I think it's nice seeing a lot less wind water. Um, mm -hmm. I think people are starting to figure out that it's not the 
be all end all. I guess uh, Mono Wind has every been card. pretty well against it, uh, from what I've heard in various chats. And people are saying, "Oh man, people finally caught on." Yeah, you've seen a lot of familiar... sisters, Yuri's. Yeah, you've seen a lot of familiar faces. Uh, Robert Phillips, um, Evan Tan guy he... coming out of nowhere with the Mono Lightning, crushing, crushing dreams. I'll always keeping people in check anytime they think something's broken he's like wait a minute hold on he's playing three copies of the new cane yep oh Ooh, that's his only forward baby. above four cp which i really like he's staying low to the ground um with hard to deal with forwards like illua and hildebrand illua hildebrand yep um, um maya Diana. maya uh, is just, insane so against windwater it's like <laughs> both, they don't stand. both of my uh Scion's opponents had copies of that card. And that was actually super annoying. Because in a Scion's matchup, I can block with Porm, get a thing back, kill another guy, that kind of deal. But not with Maya. Like, I I only play eight forwards. So, like, I actually never got to block with, like, my... I Cloud Darkness board wiped once. I had Porms on the board. They just all got dulled out of the way. It was actually really brutal. Yeah, I really like this list. Um, obviously, he's trying to hit Sid Previa every single game. Mm-hmm. Um, preferably into like Louis Swa, uh, and just ramp to five backups as quick as possible. It's mm -hmm. interesting not seeing a Dea in a mono lightning list that's yeah. ramping backup so fast. I think it's uh, similar but... to what I was saying about your deck though, which is you almost don't want to break some things like Zidane's or uh, like Fina. Well, Fina you won't break with the Dea, but things that get a lot of entry value when you can just dull them out of the way. Like even this deck has Bahamut Zero, has Ramu, uh, mm -hmm. the. Uh, well, Goblin's kind of sweet. Yeah, it has the Alba. I mean, even Rigdia dulls. All yeah, stuff. Alba, Rigdia, yep. So there's a lot of ways this deck kills things and gets them out of the way without having to play Adia. And Adia's pretty garbage when you're not doing well on backups. So, I mean, she's a great EX burst, <laughs> but... Yeah, that's super interesting, actually. I like this list. Yeah, Hildebrand's very good. I mean, Hildebrand's been very good for two formats now at least mm -hmm. in my opinion he's been great since he came out uh, he's it's always like veritas been a tough card proof like you just yeah. sack him with veritas get him back and then you play him again do the same thing again seems good yeah like if that's your only forward and they have famfrit or veritas in their hand like that never feels good to famfrit <laughs> or veritas like i also like but... uh, a lot of these mono windless are playing garuda which is a summon that kind of got pooped on for a while people just were like oh this card's bad it's unplayable Never have enough things, not good, but apparently it did work here. Because uh, almost all the lists had, well, half the list had three copies. Uh, one of them was playing a, some spicy Alexanders, but yeah, it's uh, refreshing to see a meta that is not all wind water. I wonder if uh, this is going to be one of those lull NA moments where we're behind the curve or something. <laughs> uh, although, to be fair, I've heard lots of complaints on both sides of the aisle, so about the deck and yeah in they're general. all yeah I, I think it's just good proving how healthy the meta actually is contrary to facebook comments mm -hmm. no <laughs> um, it's definitely not fun to lose that way but i mean it's not unbeatable so no far from unbeatable um i think it just took a little time for people to explore more uh, mm -hmm. check out the actual options we know wind water hasn't gone like undefeated in the past um <clears throat> Right. I mean, to be fair, this is probably the most powerful iteration it's ever had. Uh, maybe not in the environment it was in, because there was definitely one meta where it was up there. I forget which opus it was. I mean, even last opus, when JFB topped with it, Windwater was pretty much everywhere. But you still had Diluma around, though, so like Earthwind was still kind of, I think, probably... <laughs> I guess it was like Earth Wind, Earth Ice, and Water Wind were kind of in a triangle f fighting for power for most of the right. tournaments. Um, I think I would say Ice Earth came out on top more often, uh, but the times where Ice Earth didn't, one of the other two got to, you know, be like, hey, we're here too. <laughs> no, yeah, I think uh, I'm glad to see the meta kind of like, I don't know, more balancing out, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know, for lack of a better term. Uh, yeah, I think we got a lot of Opus 9 left to play. I don't think we need to see any bannings or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see that talk has kind of calmed down. <laughs> um, it seems like every, <laughs> like a week, maybe not even a week ago, just a few days ago, it was, we were still on like the ban Riku or ban Valve or like 
what's it gonna be or ban yuna or diabolos and uh actually these mono windex two are playing five archer effects so they're either playing two archer three ninja or three archer two ninja which is uh that's smart the way to play. do it right there <laughs> yeah it's definitely definitely a very smart play uh i know like a lot of japanese lists they're always playing archer backup or any sort of like backup removal um mm -hmm. so maybe we can take some notes from those guys um yeah i think it's the meta's fine so. <laughs> the meta <laughs> is fine says world's qualified player cody yeah. snodgrass <laughs> that's all right did it with mono ice mono ice quote unquote quote unquote a tier two deck um <laughs> i won't say names on who said that but um <laughs> <laughs> but but you're the one smiling <laughs> yeah that's right that's right uh but yeah i think that about wraps us up for this week yes sir um we've been the choker bros guys and uh i'm cody snodgrass i'm zach burrell we'll see you next time